Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm gonna to do a detailed review on this Mr. Coffee Frappe single serve iced and hot coffee maker. So Mr. Coffee just released this. They're calling it their three in one. It'll do a frozen frappe, it's got a blender. It'll do an iced coffee and it'll just do a normal hot coffee. So you don't need all the things I've got here but I do got some syrups and some uh, white chocolate I'm gonna be using some milk, I've got some whipped topping, and I've got some chocolate chips for a chocolate chip uh, frappe. It comes with a really nice recipe book and that's what I'm gonna be following. Okay, so let's take a look at this. It's a coffee maker on this side. It's gonna brew coffee. You've got this blender on this side. And what's really nice is they've got a set of instructions here on, on the uh, blender and we're gonna be following those. And you can brew the coffee right into the blender, that's really nice. So down here we've got buttons, we've got an on-off button, we've got a hot brew, a over-iced, we've got a blender, and a pulse. So these two buttons are just for the blender, and these are for the coffee maker side. So this is a pretty standard, it's just a simple coffee maker. We're going to put our water back here, and our coffee right here. It's got this brew head. This is a reusable coffee filter that comes, it comes with this. This is the brew basket. Now there's no plunger on the bottom, so it will drip. But the uh, plunger basket goes in there like that. Make sure you get it in there right, don't get it off. Make sure this lid closes nice. See, I don't have mine on, there. Now the lid closes all the way. Okay, so back here where we put the water, it's got these little steps. So it's got a six ounce, an eight ounce, a 12 ounce, and a 16 ounce. So whatever water we put back here is how much this coffee maker is going to brew. It's going to, it's going to heat it up and then shoot it over this brew head. Whenever we hit either one of these brew buttons, either the hot or the over ice, it brews whatever water's in here and brews it over the coffee. Okay, so you can use a paper filter. This is a one to four cup basket style coffee filter. You can use this in there in place of this. So you don't use, it's either or. You don't put this in there with that, you don't put that in there with that. So this is a reusable filter that's a really fine, kind of like plastic. It's gonna keep the coffee grounds out. You do get some sediment in your coffee when you use a reusable filter. But if you use a paper filter, you don't get any sediment in your coffee. So for today's, I'm gonna be using what comes with it because that's what probably most people are gonna be using. So the filter goes in there. So I'm going to divide this video into three. The first one, let's make a frappe. That's what this thing is, is, um, was pretty much made for because it's got this blender here. If you find yourself not doing frappes, they sell a cheaper version that doesn't have the blender on it, but is exactly like the coffee maker with the hot brew and over ice. It's a lot cheaper. They also ship this with two really nice tumblers. They've got the Mr. Coffee iced logo on them. And we'll be using these when we do the, uh, the over ice. But we're going to make the frappe in the blender and then we'll pour it into here. Okay, we'll be following this recipe. Java chip frappe. We're going to need six tablespoons of dark chocolate sauce, dark chocolate chunks, and 2% milk, a quarter cup. Okay, so anytime you're doing over ice or the frappe, we're gonna, or the hot, but we're going to grab this measuring cup. This is what we're going to use to measure the coffee grounds. It has two sides, it has an over ice, and this side is the side you use for hot brew. We'll do that towards the end. But over ice, and when we do a, uh, we're gonna do, it says one to two scoops. Now I measured this, if you ever lose this, that that is uh, three tablespoons. Now the coffee I'll be using, it's just Dunkin' Donuts medium roast ground coffee. Now it doesn't say, so th this is for like a, just a normal drip coffee maker. It's ground at a medium grind. You can use whatever coffee taste you like. Just make sure it's like for a normal coffee, normal drip coffee maker. So let's grab the blender because we're gonna be using the blender for our measuring. It's really nice. So it goes on there. It's, you've got this locked indication and then the handle, you turn it there, it's unlocked. You put it in and turn it there, it's locked. Now what's really nice about this, it seems like a pretty nice blender. It's got this lid, it's got a nice O-ring on it. Be careful, those are really sharp down there. 
So this part of it looks like a pretty standard blender. We put this lid on. Now this is really neat. It's got this thing you can unlock this extra lid. So right there is unlocked and locked. So unlock it. That now is a measuring. It's tablespoons, one tablespoon, two tablespoons, three tablespoons. This is for your syrups. So you pour your syrups in here and then it goes right in there. I like that a lot. Now when making a frappe, these, these instructions don't make sense at first, but they will once you use them. So there's, these are steps. Step one, two, three, four, and five. The first step is the water. That's the water line. Fill this up with water just from your tap, or you can use filtered water or bottled water, but fill it up to this part with water. And then we're gonna dump that. We're gonna dump that back here. That's gonna give us the correct amount of hot water to brew through the coffee. Next, we're gonna add, that step is to add the water to the coffee maker. Next, we're gonna fill this up with milk to this line right here. That's the milk line. Then the, the step four, we're gonna add ice to this line. Add your syrups. Now there's no extra other steps, but that's where you're gonna brew the coffee right into here, and then you're gonna blend it. And we're, we're gonna show you how to blend it. So the one thing this leaves out is the coffee. So in the directions, it says, let's make a frozen drink. It says, pour two scoops of grounds into the reusable filter. So here's two scoops of the over ice. Again, if you lose the over ice side, that's three tablespoons per scoop. So we're gonna put two of these scoops. We're just gonna go in there and grab. There's our coffee grounds. Make sure it's nice and level. And you're gonna pour it right there into the filter. Let's grab one more. Pour it right there into the filter. Our coffee is installed. Now you can move this brew head over, but if you ever forget, this little uh, device right here moves it for you. So when you close the lid, it moves the brew head. Okay, so I took this over to the sink. I added the water. I added water to the add water line. Now I'm simply gonna use the pitcher. I'm gonna pour it back here. Looks like it takes it up just shy of the six ounce mark. Okay, so next step three, add the milk. I'm gonna add milk to this line right here. Now be careful, that's not a lot of milk. Now it says you can use the milk of your choice, 2% skim milk, soy milk, whole milk, almond milk. You can even use creamer if you want, and you may even throw a little uh, heavy cream in there to kind of uh, make it frothy. So now I go to the recipe. It says dark chocolate sauce, six tablespoons, four tablespoons of, of uh, chocolate chip chunks. And then I've got the quarter, I've got the milk installed according to this. So I was just curious. It says a quarter cup of milk. I wanted to see if that line was a quarter cup. It is. I filled it just a little bit above that line, but that is, that is a quarter cup of milk if you fill it right to that line. Now you can use Hershey, Hershey, Hershey syrup, but now this is where this comes into play. This, remember, this is our um, measuring device. And again, it's got the tablespoons marked on it. Now that six tablespoons is quite a bit of chocolate syrup. So there's three. It's a little tricky getting it out. Might have to use a little spoon. Now, you can play around with these syrups. Uh, add as much as you want or as little as you want. I'm not gonna add the full six tablespoons. That seems like a lot. Then I'm gonna put three tablespoons of, I just use, I just use a mini, semi-sweet mini morsels. You can use the dark chocolate ones if you want. Okay, I've got the syrups and everything right in here. And it might be easier if you didn't use the lid, but it is a nice convenient lid. It'll be, that syrup is pretty thick. So these syrups, these runny syrups, uh, they'll work pretty good in this part here. Oh yeah, I was skipping ahead. We gotta add the ice, sorry about that. Ice to this part, then add the syrups. Okay, so I've got the ice. It might be just a little bit over that. 
a little hard to judge. Okay, so we're gonna make sure the lid's closed. We've got our water installed, our coffee. What's nice now is I can brew that coffee right into this. And I'm gonna hit the over ice button. Turn it on first, over ice. The over ice button brews it at the same temperature. It just brews it a little bit longer, a little bit slower brew to give it more of a bold flavor because the ice is gonna melt it so much. The hot brew is just like a normal brew. So both brews are at the same temperature. One just takes a little bit longer. So this is a fast coffee maker. It starts brewing almost right away. There's the hot water going over the coffee grounds. And there's the water in the back. Whatever water was in the back, it's gonna brew that whole quantity. And that water coming out of there is pretty, is pretty hot. 170, 175. Now we've got to let it finish dripping for a little bit, even though it sounds like it's done. It's got quite a bit of coffee to, to drain down in here. And I don't like to see that it didn't even get it all saturated. That wasn't very much water we added. Okay, so our over ice light went out. The on light's still on, that's okay. So now a very important step, we're going to make sure we put the lid on. There is, a, there is kind of a, a place for that right there, but it's on nice and tight. Again, you're gonna start out right there and then turn it, and then you just hit the blend button. light is still on. This is all automatic. Okay, the light went out. That was an all automatic feature. All I did was hit the button one time and then it does it and turns itself off. So now get your tumbler, take this off. Let's take our lid off. Wow, it looks like it did a, it, it fills up that, it fills up that uh, tumbler. It actually does, looks like it did a pretty good job. And these tumblers are nice, they screw on. It's an excellent drink. Maybe a little too much chocolate chips. It has a nice bold coffee taste and a bold mocha taste. I even got some left over. It did a really good job with the ice. It's, it's really runny. Now, True frappes, I, I've done a little research online. We can add a little bit of heavy whipping cream instead of and substitute some of the, the milk that we used. Or we can use this, this exanthem gum. This is like a powder that helps form up the, uh, the ice. Because right now we haven't added anything. It's just ice, coffee, water, and milk. Now it tastes really good. And, but it does seem to settle pretty quick. It's got a nice big um, straw that'll suck up the ice chunks. It's an excellent drink the way it is, but you can play around with this and add this. It doesn't take much of this at all to make it kind of really grip together like a, like a shake you would get, like a milkshake. 
So I'm very impressed with that. That's, a, that's an excellent tasting drink. It's really cold. It's got both coffee and mocha. There's no, none of that bitter coffee taste to it, but there's definitely a, a coffee flavor. And there's definitely a heavy, and I only use three tablespoons of the chocolate syrup. So the nice thing about this is you're in control of the ingredients. You add as much as you want, add as little. It gives you tips. It says if the frappe was not smooth, add more milk. Frappe too thin, add more ice. So even though I thought the ingredients we added were, were kind of less than I thought we were going to need, um, it turned out to be a, perfect, a really, really good drink. There's the coffee, they brewed all the water. Uh, cleanup is pretty simple. It's got this, uh, this handle here. Be careful, this can be hot, but you can take that or you can take just a filter basket. Now that's a lot of coffee for only six ounces. That's a really, really strong coffee. You might be able to bump that down to a tablespoon and a half, or, but it does taste good though. It gives you a nice, strong coffee, so. So my next one, I'm gonna make an iced coffee, then I'm gonna make a hot coffee. Then I'm gonna play around with it. I want that to be more like a milkshake. See how it's kind of separating. When you put some of that stuff in there, it keeps it from separating so fast. So towards the end of the video, I'm gonna play around a little bit more with some, uh, with some of that stuff I showed you. So let's make an iced coffee. You know, they, they, it, it, they do give you two tumblers. So you can make one for yourself, do a quick cleanup. This is dishwasher safe. Same with this. Um, and same with the brew basket and all that, but if you want to just give it a quick wash, be careful. Those are really sharp down there. Okay, so now we're going to do just a regular iced coffee. Now we're not going to, we're going to add our flavors and syrups at the end. So on this tumbler, very nice, it's got a water line and an ice line. First, we're going to fill it up to the water line, dump it in the back. Okay, there's my water. We simply dump it in the back. like it's almost above the 8 ounce it's almost to the 10 ounce between the 8 and the 12. Next go fill this up with ice to the ice line. Now we're back to our scoop. We're going to use the bigger side which is over ice it's got like the snowflake and that's got like a hot cup of coffee symbol. One to two scoops. Now I find I like about one and a half scoops. You can use two scoops is fine. You might even like just one scoop but about one and a half scoops seems to be about right for me. Again, you're just going to dump the coffee right there. It helps, it helps if that brew head is out of the way. It's easier to pour. And here's my half. I just kind of eyeball it. Put the brew head over. Put that down. Make sure your over ice is right there. It fits in there really nice. And then you're just going to hit the over ice button. Make sure it's on over ice. And again, the, it brews really quick. Yeah, see how that separates pretty quick. Now this is double wall insulated. You get a little condensation, but it's not really cold to hold. So right after you press the brew button, it starts brewing pretty quick. It's not super loud. So we can see that looks like a really strong coffee, but it's gonna melt that ice. So that's what dilutes it pretty good. By the time it's diluted, it tastes pretty good. So when it finishes up, I've got my French vanilla. This is sugar free. This is that liquid syrup. And I'm going to add some milk. You don't have to add any of this, but boy, does it really make that taste good. If you like a strong black iced coffee, that's a really nice coffee. So in under three minutes, that's only took less than three minutes. Um, it's kind of got some water to drain out. You can still hear it kind of draining. What's nice is this coffee maker shuts off the coffee maker after it's done brewing. So you don't have to worry about turning it off. So let's see, it does melt the ice pretty good. At this point, you still, you can add some more ice if you like. It's, it's a pretty cold drink, but it's not as cold as if you add a few more ice cubes. You're down to around 30, 40. I like to see it around 34, 35. So I like to add about a quarter cup of milk. You can add whatever milk you'd like to add. It just really helps with the flavor. Then I like to add about two to three tablespoons 
of this syrup. You can, and you can add pumpkin spice syrup. There, let's just do two. Mix that up. Again, you can add some more ice to that. And there you have your over iced coffee. Tastes really good. This has more of a coffee taste to it. We brewed, seems like we brewed a little bit more coffee into this than we did this. They still have a really bold coffee taste. I don't have any of that bitterness from coffee. Um, this one definitely tastes better, but I think it has more sugar and stuff in it. But So this one's a really good drink. It definitely needs a few more ice cubes added to it. It's cold like that, but it's just going to keep melting those really quick. So when you use more water, it seems to saturate the coffee grounds a little bit better. Okay, so let's brew a hot coffee now. So for you travel mug people, this, this machine is ideal because travel mugs usually are between 14 and, and some, some of them are 16 ounces. That's really hard to brew that amount of coffee from like a Keurig machine or something. But this machine will let me brew up to 16 ounces. But what's nice about this, I, I fit, fill this up to the 16 ounce mark. I can put more coffee in here than I can like a K-cup. A K-cup only holds two tablespoons. This is gonna hold quite a bit more. So now I turn my scoop over. I love these directions. So for a hot brew, eight ounce, I use one scoop. That's the smaller one. 12 ounces, one and a half. 16 ounces, two scoops of the smaller one. If you ever lose that, that's two tablespoons. So I'm gonna brew 16 ounces. Make sure your container can hold 16 ounces first. So an easy way to check that is, so I just filled this up with water. Use this to pour your water into the, into the coffee maker. So I've got that filled up pretty high. Move the brew head out of the way. Let's pour our water in. And be careful, it does steam back up on you. If you brewed coffee right away with this, you'll get some steam popping back up at you. So we can see, I had this one filled all the way up. It doesn't hold quite 16 ounces, but it's more than 12 ounces. So let's say that's about 14 ounces. So the scoop really doesn't go into 14 ounces, but we can just kind of go ahead. So it's, between, so it's a scoop and a half to two scoops. And again, you can play around with it. If you like your coffee strong, go ahead and put two scoops in there with only 14 ounces. That's fine. I'm going to put a scoop in about three fourths. Okay, there's one scoop. And there's my three quarters scoop. So you can see when we brew coffee, we, we don't use quite as much coffee. Yeah, there's no ice to melt when we, when we brew a hot coffee. Okay, let's put our lid down. We've got our water in. Yeah, see it moved the brew head. My coffee maker is still on. I got my empty container. I'm gonna put it down there. I'm gonna hit the hot brew button this time. It's a little bit quicker when it does the hot brew. Okay, so here we've got the water coming out, the hot water. It's right around 160, 170, ramping up pretty quick. Fiona wants to help. Oh, she's being good. Okay, so let's open up, be careful. This, I don't recommend doing this, this can be hot. Let's check the temperature coming out of the brew head. That's not too bad, actually. 196, 197. That's pretty good for a Mr. Coffee. It smells really good. And again, whatever water we put back here, it's gonna brew the whole amount. Okay, so there we've got a travel mug. Now we lost some water to steam, but that's a really hot coffee. Wow, 178. That's a really hot travel mug coffee and it tastes really good. Now if you want to brew just eight ounces of coffee, it, you, know, you can just put an, an eight ounce glass down here just put eight ounces of water in there and then just put one of these scoops in there and it brews really good. It splatters a little bit. The lower the cup gets, you do get a few splatters. Nothing too serious though. So I'm, I'm very impressed with this. Um, I think there's gonna be, a, I think they're gonna sell a lot of these. It's late in the summer. Timing's a little unusual um, because these are, these are frappes are, are, you know, summer drinks, I think. But um, I think they're gonna sell a lot of these. It's very convenient. They're trying to make it very easy, which I think they are. 
Um, so if you want to stick around, I'm going to play around because I really like frappes. And I'm going to play around and try to get that thickened up because you can see that kind of kind of separated a little bit. Okay, I've got my coffee in. Two of the iced big scoops are in. I've got this filled up to the water line. I'm going to dump it in the back. Yeah, be careful. That does steam up on you if you've been using it. Now I'm going to add my milk. Again, that's just not much milk at all. It fills up really quick. I'm going to add my ice. I've got my ice added. Now I'm going to add my syrups. Let's make a white chocolate frappe. It calls for four tablespoons of white chocolate uh, flavored sauce. I'm going to put three in. I used a spoon this time. That was, that was pretty tricky to clean up, but you could use that lid again, remember? Okay, so again, I'm going to use this. I'll put a link to it in the show description notes. It doesn't take much. I'm going to use uh, probably about a quarter of a teaspoon. Okay, so if you see my camera that freezes, I'm using my Samsung S21 Ultra and the camera's having problems. So I've been having to start and stop. So I'm using a half a teaspoon. This is a really, really fine powder. I don't even think it takes that much. Let's just use a quarter. Let's just use a quarter of that, half of that. Doesn't take much of this at all. So maybe I used a quarter. Okay, so I've got my syrups, everything added. This is the fun part. You put it here underneath the, I like being able to brew it into there. Hit the over ice button and it's brewing the coffee right into the blender. Again, here's how it did. Did a little better time that time. Okay, slide it over, put your lid on, okay. Start at the unlock position, lock it, hit the blend button. thicker already I can tell okay the light went out there it is I can tell it's thicker already just by the way it blended I might have added too much there's like a milkshake so I, I might have added too much I knew it didn't take much but you can see how that that binds it together. It's like a binding agent. But it just doesn't take much at all. Oops. Very good. Tastes delicious. Again, it's bound up pretty good. It's very cold. Um, yeah, that's a really good. It's got some big chunks in it. It's mostly blended pretty good. Okay, so I want to try some heavy whipping cream. Let's try some heavy whipping cream this time. Okay, so back to my previous drink. I would use a pinch. I would use very, very little amount of this. It does not take much at all. I mean a pinch, like a pinch of salt. That's what I would use of this. Okay, now I'm going to put a little bit of heavy whipping cream. So I, I put my water in. I'm on step three. I got to put my milk in. I'm not going to put all 2% milk in. I'm going to put a little bit of heavy whipping cream in there. So I'm going to stop short of that line right about there. Then I'm going to add this. Again, it's not going to take much. Maybe that much. Maybe a little more. This time, let's just make a mocha frappe. It calls for, again, six tablespoons. I'm, I'm only going to put three in. Okay, we put this here. I got my six tablespoons, or I'm sorry, three tablespoons of chocolate sauce. Close the lid. Hit the cold over ice. And here's my other two drinks. You can see it's so bound together, it stays in the straw. 
this one tastes better than, than this one. Okay, it's finishing up brewing the coffee. Okay, slide it over. Whoops, be careful that drips on you. Put, make sure you put your lid on. And hit the blend button. All done. Let's open it up. Looks like it did a better job with this. It's still kind of runny, runny. You could have a little bit of a binding agent in there, maybe. That's a that's an excellent drink. Excellent, excellent drink. I do think it's gonna separate quite a bit. So maybe you could put a pinch, pinch of that in there. So there you have it. It only comes with two tumblers. I got three because I got another coffee maker that came with one. But this is dishwasher safe. This one is, the filter basket is. It doesn't say this is, but I really do like this drip tray. It holds quite a bit. So I love the recipe book that comes with it. I'm going to be doing a descale video on this. So if, if this coffee starts not tasting very good or if it starts getting really loud or taking a long time. So at least once every six to a, six months to a year, you should descale it with vinegar. I'll do a separate video on that. Thanks everybody for watching. If you could, please like and subscribe.